fire like this is pretty much only fightable by helicopter and the costs just mount um, and we have no choice but, but to put them out and so we're committed to provide those resources but what it means is that when it comes to other management activities on the ground it's more challenging for us to implement. we have a really unique set of uh, characteristics here that are really different than the mainland. We're the most isolated island chain on earth and because of that we have a lot of species that evolved here that are essentially found nowhere else but in Hawaii. What that also means is that they're very very susceptible to outside um, influences such as invasive species which may be other plants, insects and four-legged critters. We Plants here evolved without the need for defense mechanisms. So fire has a really dramatic impact on our native ecosystems. Are For the most part, they're not fire adapted. So when they burn, um, it creates a set of circumstances where, for the most part, what comes back are invasive species. The chemical composition of the soil may change. Um, and you just have this wide open space where these unique Hawaiian species just can't compete with the species that have been brought in and are really uh, successful. We have such a small um, land base <clears throat> that when things do burn, um, and they're gone forever, they're almost irreplaceable resources. Uh, we're finding now, um, based on some of the work that the Pacific Island Fire Exchange has been doing, um, is that we're essentially on par with the western states when you look at the percentage of land area burned. Uh, in addition, we're also seeing that um, fires over 100 acres have significantly increased over the last decade. And so the amount of effort and funds that it's taking for the various firefighting agencies to um, control these wildland fires is significantly increasing. We had a significant decline in rainfall. Um, and as I mentioned, you know, we have species such as fountain grass on Hawaii Island, which is an African bunch grass that's adapted to fire. And so what, what happens is when an area burns or you have serious disturbance, say from um, you know, grazing or ungulates that remove trees, uh, it's replaced with grassland. And so I think there's an estimate that roughly 25% of the land that DOFA manages, much of it has been invaded by grass um, fire-loving species invasives. that entire understory layer is removed um, and the likelihood of soil runoff which can make it all the way to the coral reefs and impact the fisheries. It even impacts essentially our tourism in the long run. When you think about you know, clear waters and the ability to snorkel and the beauty of so many of these areas that um, preventing that, those kinds of uh, events from happening is something that we really want to make sure we're working on. What would you like to drill home for people who are out enjoying the forest in terms of how do you, as Smokey Bear would say, how do you prevent forest fires? Leave no trace. Um, essentially, people really need to be careful, especially you know in these winter months when we often have these systems where that provide for really dry, calm winds, blue skies. Hills are really inviting, but what it does is create, um, we have lower humidity levels and if you toss that cigarette butt, it may smolder and may cause a fire. We've lost half of our native forest cover already. Given that we're two-tenths of one percent of the land base of the, you know, U.S., um, any fire is significant that impacts um, you know, beautiful, pristine forest.